get it moving by doing other fascial things, visceral things, then the inside mechanisms that you're currently not feeling, if they're there, they should be better. If they're not there, it never matters. Okay, and the way I want you to try it with patients so you don't stress yourself is you get them in between when they're half sleeping, put your hands on them and you feel for the rhythm. What are you doing? Well, I'm feeling for a rhythm that Steve said was here. No, I'm feeling for some tissue tension. You give them the simplest explanation that puts them back to sleep and lets you work. Because you are going to learn this on your patients, not, not all in three days. It just doesn't work that way. You learn it by, it's why we don't do like, you know, four modules together. There's no point. You have to go and, and go do it with your patients and learn it from your patients. Okay, so, um, and the mobility, the mobility everyone should at least painfully be able to identify with at this point, that something is happening in you. And if the body does have the ability to be well, then by getting, by restoring more mobility, you have a better chance. If you don't believe the body has the ability to be well, there's the door. Okay. So, um, all right, let's, let's look at stomach. Oh, this will probably look similar to what we just did for the liver, except that I don't have all this he heavy tissue to try and lift up. Am I going to get underneath the stomach? I don't know whether I'll get underneath it, but it could be in a great big loop. I know that the um, GE junction, the gastroesophageal junction, is most likely going to be under the rib cage, under the last rib or two. The pylorus is going to be about five or six centimeters midline, left or right, depending on whether they're eating and there's tension pulling on it. So I know it's going to start up here, and it's going to end somewhere around here. So if I just reach my hands uh, midclavicular, a couple of fingers down, so that I can go deep. I don't need to go quite as deep as I did for liver. But if you don't go deep, then you're going to curl your fingers and you're going to lift, you're going to start pulling the rib cage. That's not going to be a stomach lift. It's going to be a rib cage painful pull technique. Okay. Did you go through this is anatomy landmarks uh -huh. again? I'm just a little spacey from the table where I can just like hear me. I can. Will I? I will. Do you remember? Would you? I will. When we were in first grade, you had to go to the bathroom. Class, the other class where I heard this, but you didn't, so I can say it again. You go, teacher, I have to go to the bathroom. Can I go to the bathroom? And she just wouldn't let you go unless you said, may I go? But, you know, when we're in first grade, we're too stupid to know that that's what she wants. So you just, you, know, you have to go and you don't know what the trick is. So I'd like to reflect that back on my colleagues. Yes, I will be happy to. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So what was your question, the anatomy? Okay. Well, I know where it starts. I know where the stomach starts. Uh, let me go back here. I had, I had the stomach variations in the other picture. This is probably going to be where it's supposed to be. If it's sliding and moving around, if they have a hiatal hernia, which um, if you're in the Amish population, everyone has a hiatal hernia because someone told them they have one. So they all come in. What's your problem? I'm going to a hiatal hernia. I said, no, no, what's bothering you? Because once they've heard that, it's very common in our patient population. They just say it. Aside from something sliding around here, I pretty much know it's going to be under the rib cage, probably. Um, and this, more or less, is going to be, the pylorus is going to be five or six centimeters dead on midline. Uh, it can be a little bit to the left or the right. You can have some mobility. When I say I know where this is going to be and I know where that is going to be, this is fixed in by the diaphragm. What's, the, what's fixing the... Pylorus, how do I know where that's going to be? How do I know more or less where it's going to be? Paul? Oh. No, nothing? Big Z followed by another Z followed by another Z. This is all going, where is this going from here? Right. Retroperitoneum is going to be a blanket going over it like putting a blanket over this table and putting some blocks under it, and that blanket's going to hold it down. This is going to be where we think it's going to be. Um, this can be all over the place, the stomach. The jejunum, the ileum, can be all over the place. And um, somebody asked me, 
Hisham asked me about you know a good book to read. Brawl's books are great books to read. I, I certainly recommend them. But um, I would tell you that there's a lot of minutia in there that is not applicable to practice. Doing uh, mobility techniques for small bowel for jejunum and ileum. Why aren't we doing it? Because I don't think it's going to be any value to you. It stuff's all over the place. We are going to do something that's going to be mobility for the small intestine, but not, not for jejunum, not for ileum. We're going to drag the root of the mesentery, because I know where that's supposed to be. And you'll know where it's supposed to be on Monday, because we're going to move it. It's going to be the biggest technique we're going to do. So things that are mobile are amenable to um, sometimes to mobility and very often to motility. So we can do motilities for the uh, uh, duodenum and jejunum where they meet. But here, mobility, I can do the stomach because I know where point A is more or less, I know where point B is, and I know what's gonna be under my fingers. Okay. Now, I just drew this arrow a little off kilter because the way I learned this was to do this and go equal and opposite, go um, mid-clavicular. But my experience of this is just not that, and it doesn't make sense with the attachments because the pylorus is down here. So I'm pulling it a little bit, just a little bit off. It just is. You can go a little bit higher. If you're able to feel something, you're just following it. You're not doing anything to it. It goes one way toward midline. It goes another way away.
to slowly draw your hands off. Now we're going to rotate so this isn't like a train wreck. We're going to go in a circle this way. So. Safety is in the amount of pressure you're going to use. Uh, the times when I have been, when I've avoided doing anything with pressure have been more, for me, have been more medical legal problems. I had a patient who had a bunch of uh, miscarriages, who's a long time patient, whole family, long time patients, came in to see me for her usual stuff. She was pregnant again, and she said, oh, the OBGYN put me on bed rest. I said, I can't treat you. It's not that I can't, not that I felt unsafe, but you know, we started to get, it's, it's a medical legal world. So those are the times that it made me back off from even touching, because in that case, she's already had five, four or five miscarriages on her own. The likelihood of another one is pretty likely in her. And if I did this, even though I think the family was, I had a strong relationship with them, I don't feel the need to put myself at risk. When you feel like you're doing something risky, here's something, don't do it. Here's a crazy idea. Uh, when I feel something risky, I usually do do it. Um, in practice, it has served me well. In my personal life, not so well. Okay, so you got to use your clinical judgment. Use your clinical judgment. So I want to show you this technique. Very great technique to do. And um, it's the same depth here. I'm more or less going to the opposite ASIS. It's a guideline, not a rule. I know that it's fixed under here, a little bit to the left of midline is where the GE junction should be. Okay, uh, the top of the diaphragm and to, to drag it in an equal and opposite direction and get a little bit of pull. I'm more or less going to go to the opposite ASIS. And then, you know, depending on how, uh, depending on the size of your hand, we can use some other variations here. Um, you can use your um, heel of your hand. You're going to trade pressure for specificity. If you're going to use the heel of your hand, you're going to use a lot more pressure. I don't think this will be the best use. You can try the edge of your hand. But for the cheek junction, again, not the best use. It's going to be best with fingers. Um, we are going to do something in this same area and call it root of the mesentery, but then it's going to be tremendous pressure straight down, and you're going to feel a different structure. Now we're talking about the structure that's tucked up under here. Um, and then lastly, if you can get around, you can do the same thing. You the same, same idea. This hand has to be strong, okay, and pull them in the opposite way. So, uh, spin your head around the other way. And the other one? Yep. Uh, maybe I'm going to be standing. I don't know if you want, I don't know if you can get over there or. That junction is somewhere around here. We're going to play with this idea as an energetic idea. So it's under his rib cage. I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to go close to the rib cage, but I'm going to start down so that I can take the slack out. Start a couple fingers down, make the right door, right up to the rib cage, because I'm not going to be.